Shalom, brothers and sisters. So I've entitled this one Movie Night. Let's, uh, let's just have a look at a couple of movies, and we can do a lot more when I have more time, but these are just a few that I want to point out to you what they're selling. First movie is Troll. It's about a Nephilim giant inspired movie. The creature awakens from underground where it has apparently been driven by the Christianizing of Norway. It awakens and heads out on a disaster movie scale journey. Big special effects. It's massive. It's a Nephilim, exactly as you would imagine them straight out of Genesis. Church bells. One of the things that irritates it the most and hurts its ears are church bells. The movie is very focused on making sure that the villain is Christianity. This drives it into a rage and multiple helicopters are destroyed because of it. Interesting that the theme of Christianity is at the center of this and it's regularly visited. It smells Christian blood. Now if you remember that old little fairy tale, fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. This takes that exact thing, turns it around and this... Nephilim creature smells Christian blood. At one point in the confrontation between the troll and the military, it stops, smells the air, and picks up a scent. It reaches down and picks up one soldier who's praying between his comrades, picks him up gently between the rest who are not Christians, and then eats him. Non-Christians... Throughout the movie shows various interactions by non-Christians where the troll does not automatically want to kill them, but listens. So what puts you in danger is being a Christian. As it was in the days of Noah, giants roamed the earth once before, Genesis 6 verse 4. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Nephilim. The next one is Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. It's a prosperity-inspired movie. The pastor was caught having indecent relationships with young boys which ruined his mega church. Him and his wife are now documenting their comeback. Whilst fighting to do this, his past sins keep coming to light and it seems they are still there. It's a bad picture of what Christian church is. They show us their millionaire lifestyle. They show how fake the relationships between pastors are as they compete for the biggest church membership. They use the term showtime to best describe how they're going to pull this off. And this paints all pastors and churches as this type of farce. The next one is the TV series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Now just briefly on this, it's a Rise of Evil inspired series, movie. These are some of the quotes in the series first episode. Nothing is evil in the beginning. There was a time when the world was so young that there had not even been a sunrise. But even then, there was light. Sounds like straight out of Genesis. Before God made the sun, there was light. Because God was the light. Here they're using it. Fixed on the light that guides her whispering of grander things than darkness ever knew. Like the devil angel of light whispering. Their trees of light are destroyed by the evil enemy, a ripoff of the two trees in the garden. Morgoth is like the devil and Sauron, his puppet leader, to enslave all. Black Adam, my powers are not a gift, they're a curse born out of rage. Sounds like the Antichrist. I'm not peaceful and I don't surrender. Sounds like him. Force is always necessary. I kneel before no one. 
all knees will bow before Jesus Christ. Mark this point. It's his darkness that lets him do what heroes like you cannot. Making darkness to be something sought after. My son sacrificed himself to save me. Wow. He's been asleep for 5,000 years. Also interesting. I'm not peaceful. You didn't come to seek justice. You came to exact revenge. You can be the destroyer of the world or you can be its savior. This thing is so full of evil and references to what's coming. It's crazy that people don't see it. And then the main villain besides the villain who's the hero, Sabak, is powered by six demons, namely Satan, Ain, Belial, Beelzebub, Asmodeus, and Kratos. It shows that what the world needs most is not the good guys, all those striving to do it the right way, but an anti-hero with darkness and the option of being a destroyer if he so chooses. Very reminiscent of what's coming. The man who fell to earth, TV series, an alien is sent to earth to elicit help to save his planet and people. He spends his time making contact with another who has been here for a long time and then to design a machine that is capable of saving his people and earthlings. He constantly reaffirms that we have until 2030 before we are hopelessly destroyed. Agenda 2030. Comparisons of him coming from the heavens as some sort of savior. A reference to a group that look after and follow the Nephilim. A reptilian-like natural look revealed from time to time when he shows his real face. He can alter the DNA of humans, fixing health issues, but at the same time changing them to a hybrid creature, something not human. He leaves on his ship to fetch more of his kind and return in time to save us all. And then lastly, I'll just touch on Babylon, the movie. It's not even out yet, but if you just read about it, I mean, come on, Babylon. They're constantly referring to Babylon and Hollywood as Babylon in America, Babylon. Mystery Babylon? A tale of outsized ambition and outrageous excess. It traces the rise and fall of multiple characters during an era of unbridled decadence and depravity in early Hollywood. Brad Pitt said it was shocking for him when he arrived on set on day one. Lots and lots of nudity. Every day was like that. And then it was just another day at the office. And that is how it is today in the world. Shocking at first. And the more they program and program, just another day at the office. Movies, TV series, all of it, part of the design to prepare and program the masses for what's coming, for what's expected of us, for what's acceptable, for who the enemy is, for unraveling any good that might be left. It's called a program for a reason. It is designed to program us. Spend time in the word that you can spend your heart and your mind and your soul on things to do with Jesus and thereby guard yourself from that which has been beamed into our homes and our devices all the time. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.